it goes back a long time ago. When I was um, in the second grade, I grew up in the uh, Midwest United States uh, during the OPEC crisis. And uh, I remember waiting in line to get gasoline uh, with my father on the days you were allowed to get it. And he said to me at that time, you know, someone needs to do something because we're going to run out of uh, fossil fuels. And um, that got me thinking a little bit about how much fossil fuels there were left in the world. And ultimately, I kind of landed in solar as an area where I thought I could uh, make some important contributions in my life's work. And it's certainly a goal that would, if successful, would have a big impact. Early on, um, a lot of my inspiration came from reading the literature. Henry Tauby, who I've only met once, he's now deceased, was a huge inspiration to me. I still read some of his papers. And people like Lewis at Berkeley, I find just, they contributed so much to the field of chemistry and had such a deep appreciation for it. I can't help but continue to be inspired by, by them. focus on application I think is timely and important, uh, particularly in energy research where um, you know, our continued use of fossil fuels is leading to problems that I think are self-evident to most of us now. And there is a real need for some breakthroughs that could get us off that track. At the same time, I would say maybe a concern of mine is that we don't get too short-sighted. Uh, some of the biggest breakthroughs in science often come from serendipity. And if the focus were too much on application, you could imagine scientists getting caught in local minima, if you will, of trying to optimize some niche application where there was a big, you know, real global minimum not too far away that never gets discovered. So I think we still need a balance between basic science as well as um, applied sciences and the energies. What we look for most critically there is a clear delineation of what the impact of the research is. And that's difficult, I think, for many authors to communicate because it involves providing enough context of the field that you can understand where the challenges are and then where this science will impact that. You know, we are uh, a journal that's focused on applications of energy materials. So even if you haven't yet had an opportunity to explore the application, in your discussion section, in your introduction section, take some time to communicate where this, where you envision this fitting into the application so that it's clear uh, that it's well suited for our journal and that you're thinking toward those applications. If you already have that in the paper, that's even better, but still providing context, a table at the end, what is the state of the art, what is a common benchmark in this field, and where do I stand relative to that, really helps not only the journal but the impact of your own individual papers. One thing, if someone believes they're interested in chemistry and thinks they'd like to have a career in it, I think the most important thing is to have a, a curious mind about chemistry. In terms of you know, following your own goals and careers, I think that's really important. You know, if you can hear repeatedly it won't work, it's not going to happen, you should certainly weigh that in, but never give up on your goals and your dreams. So uh, stick with it and pay attention, but if you believe something can happen, uh, keep working at it, it's likely that it will.